Okay, super, thanks. Um, so hi everyone. And you know, because it's a little bit cozy in here with just uh, the six of us, um, I think it's possible to do a round of introductions. So just so, um, so I'll start and, and I'll just uh, call out names as, as I see them on my Zoom channel here. Uh, but my name is Eric Schultes. I'm an American living and working in the Netherlands for about 10 years now, a biologist by training. And I got uh, more and more into data intensive research that eventually led to this uh, business around fair data. And we launched a workshop in 2014 that, that coined this interesting acronym. Uh, and then over the, the last six years, it's been sort of figuring out how to articulate the FAIR principles uh, in, in as wide and general a context as we can. And so for the last three years, I've been at the GoFAIR International Support and Coordination Office. And that's a, a small organization run by the Dutch government uh, to, to kind of kickstart implementations on FAIR, to try and find ways of actually implementing the FAIR principles. And Mark Musen, who's here with us, uh, and the CDAR workbench have been there from the beginning because metadata is so fundamentally important to FAIR data um, that it, it almost seems like uh, uh, CDAR was anticipating all the FAIR principles even before they were here. So Mark, maybe you would like to introduce yourself. Sure, thanks, Eric. I'm Mark Musen from Stanford University. Uh, my team works on a whole stack of technologies that are all open, all designed to facilitate open science. We work on the Protege Ontology Editor, which is an open source tool that's probably the most widely used tool for creating ontologies in the world. We distribute them through BioPortal and OntoPortal, which are tools that are open and allow people to get access to ontologies. Uh, and all of those are used by Cedar, which uh, I imagine Eric will talk about. Uh, he and I have been uh, collaborating now for about the past three years on the idea of trying to use better metadata as a mechanism for facilitating fairness. And uh, we've worked on these uh, workshops, which I think are really very uh, helpful encapsulations of how communities can come together and actually make their data fair. And you'll obviously be hearing a lot about that in the next uh, 50 minutes. Great. Uh, Caitlin, do you want to introduce yourself? You're in mission control for us today. Uh, Caitlin Thaney, I'm the Executive Director of Investment Open Infrastructure and here to help with all of your channel needs and also to participate in the conversation. Thanks, Eric. And, yeah, and Caitlin, um, also, uh, will it be possible to send uh, links through the chat or are we going to keep that locked down? You know what? I think we are going to keep that locked down if you want to put that in either the J. Ross chatter room um, or the J. Yeah. Ross conference room. That's probably your best place Good. to go. Um, so I'm going to put links to our slides and to common notes Perfect. over there. Super. Thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. Cool. And then I see uh, uh, Lynn. Is that you? Hi, I'm Lenny Archibright. I'm a new librarian uh, at uh, North Carolina Biotechnology Center. Um, and I'm managing a open access database of information and learning about like how to use taxonomies that are um, discoverable. Um, okay. So related to metadata, but um, I'm new to the metadata field. I think uh, your, your ambitions are closely aligned with, uh, with those of Mark and I. So yeah, nice to have you here. Yeah. Uh, I see also Lisa. Yeah. Hi, Lisa Ryan. I'm at the University of Glasgow at the um, newly formed, literally this week, Center for Methods in Metascience, uh, which is part of the Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology. And I work on a um, project um, called Science First with Daniel Lackens, who's in the Netherlands, trying to um, create machine readable structures for describing and making fair things that aren't just data, like hypotheses or stimuli. Very nice. Very cool. And Esther. 
Hi, I'm Esther. I'm a data steward at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. And that's actually not the main reason why I'm here today. Uh, the Netherlands, uh, the Dutch national funder has released a proposal, an open science uh, call. Um, and I would actually be interested in learning more about uh, the workshops that you organize to see if that could be relevant for my field and if, if we could maybe set up a workshop like that should we receive funding. And I also heard about CEDAR last week and that sounded super interesting, so happy to learn more. Okay, super. Um... So I, I have good news and bad news. The, the bad news is I have this really long slide deck, uh, but the good news is, is that a lot of that material is just, uh, I think, reference and uh, I can go through the slides pretty quickly and then maybe we can just get to conversations. Like for example, Esther, you know, for those who might wanna set up a metadata for machine workshop, what does that look like? And what's maybe a process behind that? Um, so what I can imagine doing, if I can share with you um, the link to my slides, then you would have links to, to everything else. So, um, so Caitlin, I, uh, maybe you could tell me again, which channel I could share with exactly. If you'd like to put it into the, um, JROS 2020 conference channel, you could do that or the JROS 2020 chatter channel. Okay. So, or uh, I can't say I see those channels. Ah, uh, okay. Here. Let's see. I will give me one second. Okay. You um, should now. <laughs> help desk conference introductions, code of context, general announcements. Uh, if you hit channels at the top, I also just tagged you in a comment. Um, JROS 2020 dash conference. Yes. Awesome. Super. So uh, I'll say. Uh, there you go. You're there. Yeah, Eric's uh, slide. Now I hope everyone else can can see this too. And um, and then there's some common notes that I set up. So, uh, so I could say, you know, if everyone can see my screen, I could say, hey, you could copy down really quickly this short URL. And then, of course, I can say, and go ahead and copy down this short URL. But that would be silly. Okay. So, um, so those are my slides. And, and I can, can take you through some, some general background on, on the metadata for machine concept, where it came from, and how we're, we're trying to implement it. Uh, so there's uh, acknowledgments here. There's a, a wonderful group of people that are very focused right now on developing some of the methodologies for us. And uh, this has been incredibly productive over the last, even, let's say, 10 months, particularly with the COVID pandemic, which is fueling a lot of our activities right now. Uh, there's an abstract for today. And these are uh, links. So there's the common notes. And I will just quickly switch to, let me see, I will quickly switch to the common notes so you can see what they look like. Um, see, I'll stop sharing here. And I'll go to the common notes here, maybe. Yeah. So here's the common notes document. And so what I tried to do is really just embed a lot of links everywhere. So we have 50 minutes. I want to try and keep room for conversation. So there's just a lot of reference materials here. And it's the, uh, the workshop itself today, the conference today. Here's the background on M4Ms. And then we've been numbering these workshops consecutively because they're all kind of unique at the moment or you know, the way we do it. It's really evolving quickly. So metadata for machine workshop number four, and then five and six was with the Danish e-infrastructure group. Uh, and then what I'll focus on today is seven through 12, which is 62 projects that are funded by Zonum Vays, the, the Dutch funders, uh, national COVID program. And there's materials here. There's a link to CDAR workbench. And again, the, uh, uh, the abstract and there's notes. So feel free 
uh, like Esther, for example, if you want to leave any comments or questions concerning, you know, how do I set up a M for M for for Delft, you can just feel free to leave your, you know, to leave notes here. Yeah. I've gotten into the habit of, of creating documents like this because it's um, uh, it can be very helpful for follow-ups later on. So let me go back to my slides. <clears throat> and let's talk a little bit about metadata for machines. So I'm full-time employed at the GoFair office now for three years. And uh, you know, we launched after this paper was published uh, in Nature Scientific Data, where these FAIR principles were first sort of academically published. And these are 15 one-liners and they have a relation to open science for sure, but they are not restricted only to open data and to open research environments. Um, even closed data, or let's say really highly sensitive data like patient data can be made fair. Um, but one thing that you see in, in almost every case here is that metadata is, is everywhere in the fair principles. Um, in more and more, I even say that uh, metadata is for fair in some ways, even more important than the data itself. And it's not just metadata, but it's also the sense of machine actionable, interoperable metadata. So it's, it's metadata with a few technical requirements on top of it. Um, and I return, we return to the fair guiding principles over and over. It, it turns out, I can say after three or four years of this, that they are an excellent guide towards implementing components that are more and more machine actionable and you know, the, the ultimate goal here is to make F, A, I, and R much more automatic. That the machine can do these things and that the human doesn't have to do um, laborious activities just to find things or to, to get access, et cetera. So another way of looking at the principles is to parse them out by the principles and requirements that are very generic and therefore much better solved at like an infrastructure level and these are usually more technical in nature. These are the red principles. And then the blue principles are, are things that are usually have to be decided by the domain expert. And they're very domain specific. So they will be different for each and every domain for community out there. Um, they're more data related and that's to say they're more content related. So they're sort of like the technical generic stuff. It's great to have computer scientists solve those problems. But if we're gonna have fair data, and if we want to have widespread fair data, we're gonna to have to help more and more domain experts to get their metadata machine actionable so that it can be more and more in adherence to these fair principles. And so what we identified early on was you know, these components, and we started to think through, well, you know, how do we go about implementing solutions for these elements of the FAIR principles? And you, know, you can begin to write down some sort of high level generic requirements here, but what we'd like to do in the Metadata for Machine Workshop is actually create um, like a little treasure chest of ready-made solutions, especially for these generic components. And where things get really domain specific, we would like to be able to step in and through some kind of process and method, we could help a domain expert sort of refine their metadata needs to be able to describe that in a useful way, to build controlled vocabularies around that, to make sure those vocabularies are interlinked with, um, with existing vocabularies or, or mapping to to um, other resources that describe the same thing. And then eventually to get those vocabularies into, um, uh, or, or let's say then to, to build metadata schema and use those vocabularies to then create real metadata instances. 
And so there's, you know, there's a bunch of things that have to happen here. And we've been trying to figure out a formula for this in these metadata for machine workshops. And this has been over the last couple of years. So there's a link to uh, a general description of the workshops. Uh, very high level view, we can say, uh, we're trying to assist domain experts who want to produce fair resources, whether it's data or any other kind of digital artifact, um, with the creation of these machine actionable metadata that are required for this. And we want these metadata to both satisfy and adhere to the FAIR principles. And what I mean by that is um, we would like to satisfy the requirements of say principle F2, which is asking for you know, metadata for findability. How do we uh, do well-crafted metadata so that we can increase the odds that people can find the resources that we've built, even if they don't know that it exists. So that's fine. We can create metadata schema and think through what that might mean. But whatever schema we create in whatever vocabularies we might create to describe it, we want those to also be in themselves fair data. We want our schema and our metadata templates and our vocabularies to themselves be F, A, I, and R by the machine. And so for example, um, Principle I2 is asking that your vocabularies are also fair. It actually says it in the fair principles. It's kind of recursive, right? There's a fair principle that's wanting your components to be fair. But um, uh, there's an advantage that if your components are themselves fair, then when you compose bigger things out of these components, uh, there's a certain guarantee of fairness that goes along with the resulting thing that you've built. So we're trying to make sure that our, our, our fair solutions for metadata are satisfying and adhering to the fair principles. And the format of the workshop is pretty simple. We have the domain expert, can be from uh, you know, soft qualitative sciences, could be from really hard quantitative sciences, but we team them up with an expert in metadata. And I would say even a, a, an expert in fair metadata and what we want to get out, what's a product of this workshop is a fair metadata schema. It's, it itself is fair, it's domain specific because these people built it for their purposes. So we know it's domain specific and it's reusable. And what we, what we think we have, um, you know, the hypothesis anyways that we're working on in metadata for machine workshops is that once we begin to compose a library of these metadata components, and they sort of can guarantee certain aspects of fairness about them, uh, that we, we anticipate that pretty early on, we should be covering a lot of very generic metadata concerns, even if it's in a specific domain, so that the next people who come along, the next community that comes along, they can survey these metadata components that we've built, and Ideally, they can reuse much of what has been produced before. And we are banking on the fact that this kind of intelligent, focused reuse of existing resources could very quickly increase the fairness of resources in a very widespread way, not only within communities, but between communities. So that's the hypothesis we're testing as we do these workshops. Um, and by the way, uh, depending on the tooling that we use and the methods that are worked out, uh, we can even train people to do these things, right? So a data steward could begin to pick up these skills and facilitate these metadata for machine workshops themselves. Um, I'll mention a little bit now just about the evolution of the workshops. Um, and this is just to say that we're learning as we go. We're building this airplane while we're flying it. And I really have to give a lot of credit to almost 200 people now who have participated in M4M workshops. It's, it's really these participants who, you know, we always make sure they understand that they're, they're kind of entering into a research project here and that they should feel free to take ownership on these things. So even for you, if you're interested in, in pursuing uh, these activities, you know, there's a lot of low hanging fruit and you can really contribute here 
Uh, you can get authorship on things. You can build, I think, components that could see widespread reuse. So I think it's a special moment in the M4M uh, situation here. Um, if you go back two years, a little bit more than two years, we had our first workshop. Mark, Mark was there as well. Um, this was sort of an inaugural. We just tried to set up this, this idea. In January of 2019, we had these little mini metadata for machine workshops, one for funding agencies, actually, because the funders realize that if, if they want to promote fair research outputs, that at some level, the funder has to also become fair. They have to describe themselves with fair metadata. So their heart beats a little bit faster and they get some perspiration on their forehead thinking, oh my God, I have to create fair metadata too. How do I do that? Um, and then we also work with a group called Preclinical Trials and maybe I, I can show you a little bit about their results. Um, but then in March of this year, COVID came along as did two funded projects, one from the Phillips Foundation, one from Zone and Bay, our Dutch funder. And these two projects were essentially doing the same thing. It was to get COVID data fair. In one case for Uganda and, and for some hospitals in Uganda, in the other case for, uh, for the Leiden University Medical Center. And we ran metadata for machine workshops to, to try and attempt this. And uh, there's some nice results. Uh, you can see that at the GoFair website. But what I want to mention is that what this resulted in was a real, the last 10 months, despite all the problems of COVID, we've really consolidated uh, all these methods into what we call this three-point verification framework. I don't want to go into it in detail. Um, it's here at, at this link. Metadata for machines is the first step. Uh, the last step is getting your, your data and your metadata on a fair data point. But this is just to say that this is the framework that we're kind of operating in right now. And, but these two projects have now funded additional metadata for machine workshops. And here's some basic information about it. So for Vote on Africa, uh, I ran a series of workshops, uh, uh, webinars, essentially, uh, for about 20 weeks. So we have about 25 hours of a contact time with about 30 data stewards in six or seven African countries. And they were able to get their COVID data onto a fair data point. Uh, we also then around the middle part of this year ran two workshops for the Danish e-infrastructure corporation. And these workshops were for climate related groups. One was a, a repository of climate data and the other was a, uh, if you can believe it, um, weather, uh, streaming weather data from wind turbines. So wind energy, wind turbine guys collecting all kinds of interesting weather data. Uh, so that was again about 20 people in about 40 hours of contact with them. And then just we just finished up in a quite exhausting sprint, uh, six metadata for machine workshops for Zone and Bay. And this is for their COVID program. In here, we, we had contact with about 130 people, and those were 30 hours of, of workshops. And I'll explain that. Um, I'm going to bypass these slides. I'm going to go right to here. And I'm going to go right to the COVID program. And, and I want to mention this just to give you a feeling for that this is really concrete now and how it might um, be repurposed for, for your own needs. So, Zone and Thing. Uh, in haste, starting in March, launched their COVID-19 research program. There is already um, 62 funded projects in the COVID program. And from using various sources of information, what we were able to do is describe these 62 projects in a very high level way. What we did is, is we tried to describe what we call project assets. And this could be data, images, biomaterials, services that they use or that they produce, and standards. And you know, this, 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 these categories came from various sources that we had to work with, but it was okay. We, we started here. And, oops, and what we wanted to do was in each case, um, okay, yeah. So these are 
research projects and they are trying to get to their research publications. Um, but Zonum Ve is aware that these articles are gonna be among 230 articles per day published on COVID or the 73,000 had been published since January. And that these articles will probably lose contact with their data and other project assets over time because these things are not fair. Um, we will usually see a migration, you know, a disappearance of these, of these project assets, including data. Um, so the COVID program says, okay, everybody's gonna put their, their metadata and their data onto what are called fair data points. It's a metadata publication platform. It uses linked open data. So things are pretty interoperable, uh, but it's a way of kind of permanently linking your metadata to your data. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that should also connect to our research articles. And by the way, as these 62 projects publish their results, their research outputs on fair data points, it will enable us to build additional fair data points that aggregate all this data into a, a COVID research portal. And I'm just putting that here because that's another requirement of the, of the Zone and Bay program. And so here's where it gets to the metadata for machines. We have to create metadata for these assets. And um, the metadata for machines are to, to do just that. So we're playing this small role here in this very large COVID program. And we, for this, we, we, use the CDAR, we wanted to use the CDAR workbench because it fulfills a lot of these requirements that our metadata are actually made fair. And the CDAR workbench is a way to use controlled vocabularies to compose what are called fields. And fields can be grouped into elements and elements can be grouped into templates. And these templates can be exposed as web forms so that when the, when the operator fills in the blanks in the web forms, they're creating metadata instances. And those metadata instances are machine actionable. In fact, they're RDF at the other end. That means we can connect our metadata instances directly to the fair data points and achieve this high level of fairness. So what we think of then is a data steward is the one who composes these metadata templates. So they're working with CDAR, CDAR workbench, controlled vocabularies to make that happen. The researcher, the actual data producer is presented with a web form. They fill in the blanks, the, the requested metadata, and that metadata can end up on a fair data point without the researcher having to know anything about linked data or RDF or any of that. And so what's nice about CDAR is that it's connected to BioPortal, which has, I think, Mark 800 something biomedical ontologies built into it. And so this is providing a perfect environment for us to create COVID's program specific vocabularies, which can then be used to create COVID program specific metadata and then used within the projects to produce their fair data. So um, just if you can bear with me just a few more slides to show you how we did this. We had 62 projects. We divided them over six workshops. So about 10 projects per workshop. And in each case, you see that we got these project assets. What we did is we asked all the participants, so mainly a PI and a data steward from each project. So it's about 20 people per, per workshop. We asked them to brainstorm on their project assets. And we did this in a series of breakout sessions. We used electronic flip charts so people could very easily just kind of scratch their, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the terminologies that they would like to use to describe their data, their biomaterials, et cetera. And we are, so we've done these workshops now, those are done. We're at the stage now where we're consolidating uh, these exercises into one master terminology list. And then we begin to focus it. And we go from this free text, free association, more and more increasingly into fair data, fair metadata descriptions of these project assets. 
So our first step is to match these to existing vocabularies or to create new vocabularies if we have to. Uh, we fit then, uh, or we, let's say we build the metadata schemas that correspond to these project assets. And eventually we create these CDAR templates, which are informed by the vocabularies that we built. And this allows us to create these metadata input forms. And then the researchers can create the instances and hopefully that becomes more and more routine for the researcher. And then we get this data on a fair data point. Um, and this is kind of a, the general flow, we, we brainstorm. So, so I should say, by now, I think we see a general trend or a formula for how we run the metadata for machine workshops. And this is it. It's basically we brainstorm, we build controlled lists that the user prefers. We begin to build controlled vocabularies for that. And we make sure that they are interoperating with others, that, that they reach some level of technical fairness. And so the way we actually did it in the workshop is we use this um, flip chart tool called Padlet that exports the Excel controlled list or you know, controlled list in an Excel document. We build a SCOS representation of that and we can upload this vocabulary into BioPortal. That makes it available for CDAR. And now we can train our data stewards to compose CDAR templates at their discretion with a guarantee that, they're, that the data from all these different projects will be interoperable, at least at this metadata level. Uh, here's some results from, from the workshops. I won't go into that. Um, to jumpstart this process, we built a project administration metadata template. So no real scientific content, but it's just metadata that describes the title of your project, the PI, the affiliations, project number, et cetera. So peer, it's 22 questions of peer admin, but the result from this exercise in the metadata for machine workshops is going to be what we call the project content metadata template. And this will be a, a rich metadata description of the scientific content of your research project. And all that data will be in RDF and will be queryable on these fair data points in a pretty, like an ultra fine grained manner, which will be very exciting to see. Um, and what we anticipate then are using a, a, a very generic data set metadata template. We anticipate that data stewards are gonna create sort of project specific metadata templates, but with a guarantee that this will be interoperable throughout the COVID program. Uh, there's an example of a CDAR template. You can get to the template here and you can see uh, already how this capturing the data in a machine actionable way is, is already kind of live on a, on a portal environment that's been created. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna end it there. Um, there's an example of how we can reuse metadata from one metadata workshop to the other. I'm happy to go through that if, if we need to. And I just wanna say that we see a, a big um, demand for metadata for machine workshops in 2021. And we just finished with a, um, another conference uh, last week where this group, this ERA group, it's um, European Energy Research Alliance. Uh, they want to have a metadata for machine workshop to build um, metadata descriptions on carbon credit and carbon credit uh, transactions. Um, and so we just ran another workshop where they were scoping their metadata needs. Um, and you can link to that here. But uh, that's an overview, um, but I'm really happy to open up for discussion and I hope uh, you know there's enough time for that. And I don't know if Mark had any comments in particular. Uh, just that I think this focus on the metadata as opposed to fair principles is actually, I think, a shift for a lot of people who think about fairness. And I'm wonder, wondering if you want to comment on that. You know, in, so I know this is uh, 
a conference on, on open uh, science. So I don't know if people have really thought um, or if, if you've had the opportunity to go very deep into the FAIR principles yet. Um, so maybe that's just one question is um, if people maybe wanted to comment on their level of experience so far with the FAIR principles. Anybody? I just want to express enthusiasm. This is, I'm so excited about this project. What size of organizations do you tend to work with or do you want to work with? So it's, it's this whole idea should be really facile, <clears throat> really agile. And, um, you know, it's only a question of, uh, I would say, like, how much do these workshops cost? Um, we were able, we were very fortunate to be able to develop these things, you know, while I was an employee at the GoFair office over the last couple of years. Um, technically, the, the, the funding for the, for the office has run out. Um, that was by, by design. It, it came to an end in July. There is a GoFair foundation. Uh, but it's more project run or project based, so we can be we can still deliver metadata for machine workshops, but it needs to happen more and more with real costing behind it. Um, you know, we have to hire these metadata experts to come in and and kind of facilitate the workshops. So we're trying to figure out how much these cost. Uh, but what I can say is the workshops we've run so far, uh, um, or let's say, let's say the latest stage evolution of the workshops, I think we can do quite a bit of useful work in just a, a day or two. So it's the cost of employing a metadata expert for a day or two with some work before and after to make sure everything, you know, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So, so we're working on, on, on trying to get a pricing for this, but um, that sounds like a thing that be at any um, scale. Like a, a bunch of grants I'm involved in writing right now would love to cost something like that in. So I would love to to help you out with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I the, put the things in the, the shared Google Doc? Yeah, please go ahead and, and um, yeah, I see some people have been commenting already. Oh yeah, very nice. Yeah. So maybe I should begin with the questions in the Google Doc. Huh? a handbook for the metadata for machine workshops. And uh, today should be my last um, commitment this year, and then I'm on holiday. So I hope before January, mid-January of next year, that I'm able to start helping to flesh out. I already have a, a draft of this handbook, um, but it's, it's really been hacked to pieces now because people are working on it. So I, I, I don't know if it's useful for me to share it with you at the moment. But I hope by early next year, we have a handbook that would allow anybody to figure out how to run these workshops on their own um, um, in, in how to kind of guarantee that the outputs are going to be compliant with some set of specifications. Because what we want is that as these workshops are run, the products that are created have some guarantee behind them of their ability to be interoperable and are reaching some level of fairness according to some measures. So that, that's, that's the only uh, uh, things that we wanna make sure we can maintain some kind of quality control, but it should be pretty wide open when, once we get it going. Um, the costing, yeah, I'm just thinking, the costing is like I said, it's, it's the price more or less for some metadata experts for the time that they're in the workshop and preparing for it. Thanks, Eric. That uh, those are my notes. So it's okay, yeah. that's super helpful to hear. And yeah, it would definitely be very good to have an estimation of the pricing because I, I do think it would be very nice to have some support for this uh, rather than to organize it uh, ourselves. 
acts fully. So uh, yeah, just like Lisa, mm -hmm. I would be very much interested in that. So Esther, I'm going to put your name here just so I remember, and and I can get back to you. You know, because I, I think also what needs to happen very soon, early next year, is that we uh, uh, we we take a look at all the prospects. I think I have I don't know maybe ten or fifteen by now uh, organizations that are requesting M for M's for next year, and so. Uh, we'll have to sit down and really figure out what the, what the pricing will look like. And, you know, there, what we want, I think, is that the GoFair Foundation is able to uh, administer these at a pretty low cost, and, but that, they, that the foundation will cover its operating budgets, you know, um, in its administration of these workshops. So we'll try and get a, a, a realistic price early next year. Yeah, and are there outputs available? Um, absolutely. Okay. And they are accessible in these, um, oops, let me stop sharing here. I'll go back to this document. So I'm back in the um, common notes now, right? So I was looking at this question here um, somewhere. I was looking at this question. Are the outputs from previous workshops available? The answer is yes. Uh, and some of those outputs are at these OSF projects here and here, as are the slides and the slide decks and all that. Um, yeah, so, so this, this list is really super helpful. That would be very nice for us. Um, what are the components you think are closest to being generically usable between projects. Yes. So <clears throat> I, I mentioned that we created this project administration metadata template. And I say we, but this was actually um, in communication with Zone and Bay. And this was actually in communication with the program officer, Mahre Bloomer. And she helped us to compose that metadata template because it would simplify her own life because right now Mahreit manages, I don't know, three or four different spreadsheets managing these 62 research projects and she's constantly jumping around and whenever she needs to summarize something, she's cutting and pasting from different rows and columns into documents. So this is Mahreit's uh, wish list for metadata that would simplify her own life but she also did this in such a way that it conforms to the requests that she gets from her Ministry of Health in the Netherlands, and also with another group of funders called Glopid R, which is an association of research funders in infectious disease, I think. And so what Mahreit is hoping, what we're all hoping is that this project metadata template, it's 22 questions, it should be generic enough and that it is repurposable for any project, for any funder. And what we can do in any case is uh, we can hand out the link to this CDAR template. Anybody can access it. And kind of like in a GitHub repository, they can, they can clone this thing and then repurpose it for their own needs if they, if they would like. But at least there's a provenance train now linking these components and you can begin to see um, uh, which metadata components are reused the most. So we can guess and anticipate ahead of time, but it'll be very interesting when we see how these metadata components are actually reused and repurposed over, over time. But that was, I think that the best example is this generic metadata template. But you know, just, just a real simple question. Um, there's a PI, there's an author on a data set. How are you going to describe the author? Yeah, no, that's those th things like the credit taxonomy. Um, yes. Has a template for that. Um, and the project I'm working on is trying to figure out how do you use that and other taxonomies in a way that's interoperable. Um, so Mark, would you want to comment on that? Because indeed, there's a lot of existing metadata components out there. It would be great to reuse them in the metadata for machine workshop. 
how would we assemble all these different components via, say, CDAR Workbench? It's actually not all that hard because we'd have to, the hard part is actually identifying what the components are in the first place. But yeah. once we've done that, it's, it's a matter of creating the uh, corresponding templates within Cedar, having them available in the, in the Cedar library. And as Eric said, the best thing is all of those components and the completed template that comes out of the MFRAM workshop itself is all disseminatable over the web. So it's something that you can view within the group that creates it as well as share it with the community to get by it. So I mean, the hard part is identify what the initial components are and then Cedar provides all the infrastructure you need. Yeah, in, in the metadata for machine workshop is, it's not really about uh, CDAR, it's not really about creating components, it's really about this decision-making that happens with the domain experts, you know, getting them to be very explicit about their commitments to vocabularies and metadata schema. <clears throat> it's really trying to shake it out of your, out of your domain expert, <clears throat> you know, their decisions. Once we have those decisions, yeah, then it's a, a technical process to represent it in, in a CDAR uh, environment. Yeah, as with everything regarding open infrastructure, the hard part is not the technology, it's the social, the social engineering. Yeah. <clears throat> so what uh, is CDAR exactly? Is it a data structure like YAML or JSON or is it an interface for generating the, the machine readable structures? Well, the important thing about Cedar is that everything is stored under the hood in a, in a standard format. So everything is in JSON LD and is available for all kinds of purposes. But the, the other key thing is that uh, humans don't have to look at that and that the people who are involved in the metadata for machine workshop are looking at a very user-friendly web form where they see uh, the attributes of their metadata and, and find what, they, what the value sets would be for filling in those metadata uh, break. Uh, it's JSON LD <laughs> under the hood. So you have to, is most of the work then involved in trying to figure out like what existing data objects in JSON LD are you need to inherit from? I, I'm involved uh, in projects that just it's in a much lever, it's much, it's in a much level, a much higher level of abstraction that the members of the workshop are thinking in terms of their scientific needs, in terms of how to express the descriptions of experiments in ways that make sure that data sets are going to describe what was done in a way so that others can, can take advantage of the data. And yes, ultimately it gets translated into JSON-LD and all, that, all those uh, fancy uh, brackets, but you know that that syntax is not important. What really matters it, is conceptually the point of how order. scientists think. Mark, a point of order. We have six seconds to go before we go back to the main room. Um, feel free to leave your contact and info in the comments.